Roar! <laughs> Hello and welcome to Pony and Wolf Productions. I am Midnight and today we'll be reading Fantasy, written by Glim Glam. I think we've had this author before but I'm not 100% sure. Hope you all enjoy. Oh, and before I forget, these are our amazing Patreons. Link is in the description if you wish to join and it certainly does help us in the long run. Now shall we get to it. <laughs> Everywhere that Scoodaloo looked, she witnessed what her mind saw fit to imagine. She was in a world of her own, a wonderland for her and her alone. Across the vast expanse, entire realities rose and fell. It was a land of harmony, chaos, and everything in between. She first imagined herself among the clouds, floating, as if she were in an ocean of invisible, formless water. Her tiny wings twitched and flapped pointlessly. They did not serve apparent use, but in her dreams, she did not need them. She imagined herself flying, swerving among the clouds and feeling the cool puffs of condensation up close, letting it dampen and relax her body. She felt alive and free. The sky was her home in her dreams. Next, she imagined the world of the surface, the realm of the grind-bind creatures and ponies where she too had once been forced to tread for some time. But even as she left this plane of existence, she still saw fit to visit from time to time. She looked down on the creatures that lived there. Her friends, grind-bind ponies like the others, waved to her, skiddily waved back. Whenever she felt lonely, she would visit her friends on the surface. When she felt tired or stressed, she returned to her realm in the sky. She was calm in her dream. These realms previously spoken of were but temporary distractions at best. When she so desired, Scoodaloo would disperse the former constructs of her imagination and start anew. She would raise the sun and lower the moon, vice versa, if she desired. Her hooves shaped the land and her eyes envisioned a world. She was a goddess in her dream. Her form was never the same. It was whatever she chose it to be. From the small, grinded fool, that she typically identified herself to a large real pegasus with a wingspan rivaling any other. If she opted to be weak, then she was weak. If she desired to be strong, then so it was. Somewhere in between, it was no matter. She was in complete control of her dreams. Scoodaloo was at peace. In her wonderland, she was incomplete. She next decided to imagine a boat on the ocean. She was the captain as she often deemed it to be. Her friends were the first mates, and all the other schoolchildren that she knew outside of her wonderland were her crew. Dissidents were causing trouble on her ship, Scoodaloo knew, and she also knew who they were. A pair by the names of Diamond Tiara and Silverspoon, caught red hoofed, stealing napkins from the mess hall. Such a crime was punishable by a day in the stock, for all to stop and to laugh at their obvious inferiority. So as such, that Scoodaloo reckoned as the appropriate penalty for these two, she was an adventurer in her dreams. But even she soon grew tired of watching the fall she disliked, with such intensity being pelted with tomatoes, bind and helpless. The world was dissipated, to be replaced once again with a void of eternal sky, as she so decreed. Scoodaloo then imagined a stage, a familiar stage, one where many a memory had been forged, outside of her wonderland. She loved to sing, and so did her friends. Every night they would sing their favorite songs to the audience, and the audience would cheer every time. In her world, her singing was unparalleled. She was a star in her dreams. Next, and with only the slightest hesitation, she chose to imagine herself as a filly at school again. She had been watching a relatively new colt at her school for some time. When she would approach him, he would shy away. She did not understand his behavior, or why he would act so nervous around her. She wasn't afraid to admit that she felt a stirring in her chest at the sight of a shy young colt, but her attempts at contact were never met with success. Scoodly felt upset, defeated. It was the one thing she could not control in her dreams. She abandoned that world, forsaking her burdened desires. She did not want a world that she did not control. 
She wanted everything to be as she willed, and as she wanted, for this was her wonderland. Once again she imagined something new, a tower built on the ground, and reaching far into the sky. Stairs led up the tower, ascending like a corkscrew. Scoodily climbed the tower. It took her much time and determination, but she managed to climb the stairs and reach the top. Above the clouds, the night sky blazed with the lights of a million suns, each with an incredible distance away from her. She wanted to go see those suns up close someday, but she knew that there was no way she could see them all. Even in her dreams, she could not do everything that she could ever want to do. There would always be something more, something that she could always look forward to. The world faded, and Scoodly opened her eyes. No longer was she in her wonderland, and no longer was she in complete control of everything she surveyed. She was herself again, leaning against a lonely tree in the schoolyard. Her friends were off playing with a rubber ball, laughing and enjoying life. Scoodly looked over and saw the two dissidents that she had punished in her dreams. She laughed as she remembered their faces drenched in ketchup. And then, there was the black-maned colt. He looked at her for only a moment and then looked away. No matter. She closed her eyes again and visited her wonderland once more. She imagined the world she envisioned and controlled. She could see what she desired and what she craved for her and only her. For it was her dream, her fantasy. That was an interesting one. I'm not sure if she's falling asleep or if she's maybe maledictive daydreaming. And I must say, maledictive daydreaming can be very, very real. But you're in complete control as well. Some people in the comments of this story think it's lucid dreaming. In some ways I could see that, but either way, if anyone's going to daydream, fall asleep, and lucid dream, it would definitely be skiddly. Although we've seen Sweetie Belle kind of in control of her dreams-ish. I think that was more to do with Luna than anything else. But yeah, I like this story. It's an interesting one. Sweet, short, and slightly sad in some parts. I wonder who the black cult is. Hmm. That was Fantasy, written by Glim Glam. I hope you all enjoyed. Please keep watching that moon, and see you next time. Bye!